bring it on. In this present crisis, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. Do you want the whole truth? I don't think you're ready. Governments don't control things. A government can't control the economy without controlling people. It's Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth. Well, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. I'm really glad you're here. We're glad you're here. Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth probably on. Say it with me now. Art Talk. And let's jump right in. Obviously, Syria, still the conversation and still the top issue of the day. Samantha Power, our, our UN ambassador, speaking of the United Nations today, lashed out at Russia specifically, and the UN Security Council, as well as the UN's failings to do what it was set out to do, do what it was created to do. Maybe she was listening yesterday when a caller called in and made that observation. But here is our UN ambassador. Roll it. Unfortunately, for the past two and a half years, the system devised in 1945 precisely to deal with threats of this nature did not work as it was supposed to. It has not protected peace and security for the hundreds of Syrian children who were gassed to death on August 21. It is not protecting the stability of the region. It is not standing behind now an internationally accepted ban on the use of chemical weapons. Instead, the system has protected the prerogatives of Russia the patron of a regime that would brazenly stage the world's largest chemical weapons attack in a quarter century, while chemical weapons inspectors sent by the United Nations were just across town. And even in the wake of the flagrant shattering of the international norm against chemical weapons use, Russia continues to hold the Council hostage and shirk its international responsibilities, including as a party to the Chemical Weapons Convention. What we have learned, what the Syrian people have learned, is that the Security Council the world needs to deal with this crisis is not the Security Council we have. And this is what happens when you have to confront evil. Whether you are for the Senate resolution or against, whether you're for a comprehensive plan, much more comprehensive, or against. The UN has proven to be what it is, a feckless institution, because we do not have the shared values of the Soviet Union, oh, excuse me, Russia, and China. And that's why we come back. We still could get things done. I mean, 17 UN resolutions, right? Remember that? Oh, that isolation, or excuse me, that go-it-alone cowboy with President George W. Bush, right? Sure. That's another thing that's impacting this debate is the history that we've been going over. By the way, you have been prepped big time. Thank you, Dick Cheney, regarding Iraq and the comparison to today and really setting the record straight on all that. Someone who was a major player in the Iraq war and was ripped up and down was Donald Rumsfeld, Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld. I always have liked Donald Rumsfeld, and I appreciate the fact that he has been through this before and has some advice. He says there's a problem. There's a total lack of clarity with the mission. And with Samantha Guthrie today on the Today Show, explained. Roll it. Well, it seems to me you, it, it, that's a false choice. I think either you do something that's worth doing or you do nothing at all. Uh, the danger of doing something that's not worth anything, that results in nothing, uh, that leaves Assad standing, it seems to me, is that it makes the United States look like that's what we prefer. And <clears throat> quite the contrary, the president said repeatedly that that's not what we prefer. And it seems to me that, that the leadership has lacked a vision, and the essence of leadership is to have a vision and clarity. That's where you develop the kind of support and unity in our country, in our Congress, and in the world. 
And if, if there's anything that's clear, it's that, that they do not have that kind of unity at the present time because of the lack of clarity. Speaking to the answering the question by Guthrie, I think, or excuse me, would it be better to do something limited or nothing at all? And then, obviously, the defense secretary, you saw him just pull out of that, say, wait, it's a false choice. I mean, we've got to ask ourselves the right questions. One of the questions that Samantha Guthrie felt she needed to bring up was what happened in Iraq and the false intelligence, or excuse me, the flawed intelligence, and how that's impacted the current debate on Syria. And asked the former defense secretary, Donald Rumsfeld, if he felt responsible for this. This is a great exchange. Roll it. Looming over this debate time and time again has been the specter of Iraq. Most recently, the U.K. Parliament, many members cited the failure of intelligence leading up to Iraq as the reason that they won't take action now in Syria because they don't trust mm -hmm. U.S. intelligence. Do you personally take any responsibility for that or feel any responsibility for that? Well, I think that the intelligence community turned out to be wrong and the presentation made by Secretary of State Colin Powell proved out to be wrong. On the other hand, you had a, a brutal dictator in Iraq who had used chemical weapons against his own people, used them against its neighbors, rebuffed 17 UN resolutions, and President Bush went to the Congress, got the support of the Congress, went to the UN, got the support of the UN, and fashioned a very large coalition. So it seems to me that, that he, all the appropriate steps were taken, and the Congress, a Democratic Congress, voted for regime change in Iraq. It seems, once again, we have a little history there, and you look at what George W. Bush did. Interesting how he was able to rally support behind that. Why can't President Obama do that? Oh, nobody trusts him. Nobody knows where he's coming from. There's no true north with, as Stephen Covey would say, where's his true north? Where's his foundation? Well, Crane will know him by their fruits. Bottom of the hour, we're going to be speaking with Pastor Aaron Free about the Anthony Weiner exchange with a Delhi patron who first made a used a slur about his wife and then engaged in a debate with mayoral candidate Weiner. And we're going to ask about the judgment of sin and some of the arguments that were being put forth in this debate. Then we will be speaking. Yes, I, I always get uncomfortable speaking about that. I, I really do. I, I want to change his name to Weiner. Just easier. All right, Crane Durham's Other But Truth. In a moment, we're going to be speaking to Jerry Boyer. That's right. Our good friend Jerry Boyer will be with us, and we'll be discussing the bubble that you don't know about but will impact you. But first, let's go to costs. Speaking of the economy and costs, let's go back to John Kerry, Secretary of State John Kerry yesterday floating the idea, pretty big story. number of people thought so, Neil Cavuto included. Fact is, he says, if we were to use the U.S. military for regime change, hey, we've got a lot of Arab countries willing to pitch in, foot the bill, roll it. With respect to uh, Arab uh, countries uh, offering to bear cost and to assist, the answer is profoundly yes, they have. Uh, that offer is on the table. Well, we don't know what action we're engaged in right now, but they've been quite significant. I mean, very significant. Uh, in fact, uh, some of them have said uh, that if the United States is prepared to go do the whole thing the way we've done it previously in other places, they'll carry that cost. That's how dedicated they are to this. Obviously, that's not in the cards, and nobody's talking about it. But they're talking in serious ways about getting this job done. Interesting. When he says getting the job done, what does that mean? Latest press reports, New York Times front page of rebels executing Syrian soldiers. It's not just a 30-second soundbite and move on. And that's why the top of next hour will detail it for you once again and get your thoughts. But before we do that, we're going to go to our good friend, Jerry Boyer. And we are going to find out the bubble that you may not know about, and it's big. 
it's as big as the 2007 housing bubble. Ouch. Jerry Boyer. Next. Brain Durham's Nothing But Truth. Probably on. Say it with me. AMR Talk.